Welcome back to Wrestling with Ski. Happy Monday. Yes, I do realize everyone hates Mondays, but it is Monday, and it was a good weekend of wrestling. I mean, it wasn't like the greatest thing ever, um, but it could have been a lot worse. And again, like maybe it's just because uh, Crown Jewel on Thursday was the best like Saudi show they've ever put on. Like it was actually like pretty much just, I mean, real stories, even though, you know, some of them were going to turn out, but you know, I mean, I still think it was the best put together one. I still don't like the idea of the Saudi shows, but I'm not the one that gets to make these decisions. And it is what it is. I know a lot of people detest it. I hate it altogether, but superstars still go over there and do their thing. So if they're going over and doing it, I still give them the respect and watch it. And they didn't not like it was good. It was really, really good, in my opinion. Uh better than a lot of the stuff that we saw on Rampage Friday night. Which I mean it wasn't the worst thing. I mean, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy defeated Powerhouse Hobbs, you know, stole it with the roll up, you know, him doing his yeah, Orange Cassidy thing, which it's weird as hell, but I mean, it works for him. It's very him. It's very unique. Um, and this match lasted longer than Powerhouse Hobbs' first match with him last year in his debut. And Orange Cassidy beat him, I think, like twice six seconds. So he got a little, you know, farther along, got better, but Orange Cassidy moves on. After stealing that one, still can't believe it. But yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, between him and Powerhouse Hobbs, I mean, who would they put in contenders? Yeah, you know, in the men's world title eliminator tournament. I mean, like Orange Cassidy moving forward. I mean, it would be good to build Powerhouse Hobbs to get him some matches against some people, but he's still not at that point. I don't think he a very good chance he could get there. He's a big son bitch, but you gotta see how it goes. And again, Orange has been there longer and he's more over. And the wind's thing and like all that so that's why it happened the way these things you know it's why a lot of these things happen it's the way it works out nothing against him though again i think he'll he can get there one day you know it's just you know the way the roster is i mean you got to get matches when you can get them and right now cassidy's just got more wins and he's more over he's been there like it's, a, it's the way it goes and then, you know, before we get on to the you know, main event, let's get to that Britt Baker and Anna J match. Okay, like that big boot that you clearly saw, like didn't even get anywhere near Britt's face. I mean, it just straight whooshed. Like you could see it go past her head. I mean, I give Britt all the credit in the world for doing what she did and selling it. But like that was garbage. That was like an OMG chant in the worst way possible. And that topped it off because, again, I've said it enough times, you know, Hannah didn't grow up watching wrestling. Yeah, she didn't really start. Like, she occasionally watches it with me when I have it on. Most of the time, yeah. We're just always doing something or she was doing school stuff. You know, so she, she didn't really have time to watch it. And uh, she was okay with a bunch of it. Like, she was here for some crown jewel and all like that. She watches a lot more than she did at the beginning, which was none. And she was watching the match and went like, holy Christ, like this is terrible. Like this is bad. And there might be butt cheeks, but this is terrible. Like, and that's someone that, you know, coming from the perspective of someone that barely ever watches it and doesn't really know anything. Like when she can look at a match, yeah, this is god awful. It's not a good sign. I mean, obviously, I mean, Brit's had all these big matches, so I can't put it on like her, but you know, fully, but there it takes two in there. And that was bad. Like, no offense to Anna J. Like, with someone that doesn't watch wrestling is going, God damn, can we turn on something else? What this match sucks. Like, that should be a really bad sign. And again, someone was telling me, hopefully, you know, Charlotte, and we'll get into her later. You know, she became all elite. Like, how what it could do for the division, it could, but Charlotte being there, like in that situation with the division, the way it is. Like, we know she's never losing, and she's going to go straight to the title picture. She's going to be right up there. She's going to get it. And, I mean, look at how many times we look at matches like this 
It's just bad. Like she'll just make them look worse. That's really what'll happen. Like she will make them look even worse than they are. Like they got to get that stuff together before they can even consider that. Cause I think that would be a terrible move. I could bring all kinds of like legitimacy to everything, but there's not enough people on that level that can actually like compete with her. In my opinion, no offense to them. They're better than they were at the beginning. You know, they took a lot of chances on a lot of people, but that match was not good. We got to wait and see what Britt does with Ty Conti. We'll see. But, and I know they're working on it. Again, I already said that. I know they're working on it, but that was bad. I mean, it's bad enough when she's looking at me going, this is bad. Like, I'm pretty sure that's actually worse than bad. When she can tell and go, Ew. that's really, really bad. So, I don't know. Thankfully, yeah, the bastard pack defeated Andrade, and they had a good match. And a great match for the two of them, you know, showing off what they can do. It was my first time seeing Pack in like years, pretty sure since I think I saw him maybe here and there, like I don't like watching like live seeing Pack since for some reason, like they had him lose to Enzo. No offense, to Enzo, but. No one was on the Neville level, and while well, you could see he still has it now, still like his, you know, his work's even better. He's a bigger dude. Um, and it's nothing against Andrade. I like his work. Like he's very talented in the ring. It's just the character, and all. I just same. I feel the same way I did. Like when he was with the machine. Sorry for him. I mean, like again, he can wrestle. He's got the talent. He is very talented. It's just when it comes time to open his you know mouth, flap his jibs, and talk. It just wasn't good. Like, I don't know. There's just something about him and like his mannerisms and everything. It just turned me off in the whole thing. Like, again, nothing against him. He can wrestle. It's just something about the whole thing I've never liked. And that continued, but they put on a hell of a match and I would have no problem seeing them go again. They love doing trios and yeah, the trifecta around this joint. So. There will be another one, and I very much so look forward to it. You know, hopefully they get, you know, a little bit more time. And I'm sure they're going to have all the idiots, you know, everyone on both sides get together, get involved, you know, the normal. That's you know, the final one. I mean, it has to get weird. But, uh, Again, Pack looked good. Andrade looked good. It's just his character, his mannerisms. I just, I still don't like him. It's kind of like FTR when they left. Yeah, when the Re revival left and went there, FTR. Like I don't like him. Can they wrestle? Yes. Did they fit in WWE? Hell no. Do I think they can wrestle now? Yes. Do I still do I like them now? No. There's something about them. And against them and their talent. It's not my favorite thing. So overall, I mean, I give thank yeah, you know, thank God for that match in the main event because that saved the whole rampage. I mean, that's probably why the ratings are dipping still. Like every week, I'm pretty sure I saw like it been going down, and SmackDown killed them. But I mean, it was SmackDown after Crown Jewel, and yeah, you know, titles were switching hands. We all knew Brock was going to go and raise hell. That's going to get into that later. Anyone surprised by Brock raising hell? Where the hell have you been? I don't know what else to tell you. Been there, done that, seen this before. Not complaining about it. Very happy. Yeah, It fits him very well. Just been there, done that, saw it before. You know, if you don't know, now you know. So that match saved it overall, though. I mean, like. Orange Cassie, we knew he was going to have to steal one. And again, Anna Jay, that like they were just missing stuff. Like you could clearly see them missing. And that killed the whole night for me. But then you could do about it and again. The women's division can only go up. Like they have the talent, like Serena Deeb and what's her name? Slipping my mind. But those two having the rematch, like those, they're talented. Like they're very talented. We all know how talented Serena is. So that could be a good thing. You know, move forward and uh, you know, to get the TNT title, you know, TBS, whatever the hell, they get the damn woman's you know, TV title. 
And uh, I think it'd be really, really, yeah. Do it to someone like Serena or someone that is talented that could, you know, also talented, you know, on that level that could work with all the younger people and get them more experience and all of that, which best way to get better at something is doing it. And again, they've improved, but that match kind of killed Friday night for me. Sorry. Which gets us to our last AEW Saturday Night Dynamite for a while. Thank God. I don't know about all of y'all, but both, yeah, you know, all the weeks that they did it, I literally would wake up on, you know, busy both Wednesdays. I'd wake up on Thursday and, go, and start cussing, going, why well, didn't it record it? Like, what the? And I was mad. I was really mad because it has, you know, DVR, you know, Hulu has, <laughs> it's had a history of not liking to record stuff. And I could, and I had like that, oh, yeah. You know, thank God it's going back to Wednesday. Stop throwing me off. Because that's just been killing me. And I think my Wednesday nights are now officially going to be much clearer starting next week. So it'll be much easier for me to watch it live. Because I won't be running around doing a million things at 8 o'clock at night when it comes on. Which is fantastic to me. But anyway, uh, men's world title eliminator tournament first round. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson, defeats the natural Dustin Rhodes. And Dustin's always been one of my favorite guys, uh, no matter what he's been doing. I'm glad to see that he got sober and all that. And he can still go. He can still sell. He can still tell a story. He can still do all of that stuff. He's never had the main singles title, which would be nice to see him get before. Yeah, it's all said and done for him because he has done been in the business for so long and all that. But right now... Brian Danielson's, yeah, over like Rover. He has been for years winning everything. So, I mean, we all knew he was going to win it. And that it was a great match. Like, can't take anything away from him. That was a great one. Again, Dustin looked good. So, all the power to him. And Daniel's going to move on. Dustin looked good. And if he could still have a great match with the people, I don't see why. You know, as long as he still wants to and he could still do what he did, let the man have matches. You know, sir, is he ever going to get that title run? Probably not, but man can still have good matches. So it's nice to see him, you know, have him every once in a while. And again, got all the stuff he went through in his life, all his demons, like he's good and clean now. And I still enjoy seeing him, regardless of what he's painted up, like what he's doing. So it's a good way to start off the night. Thank God they saved it for, you know, beginning they put it up on a high note and again they didn't end it you know on a bad note at all but it's always good to start there and try to keep yourself throttled is it possible to do that really no but it was a great match it was a good way to start it off led to kenny omega backstage the young bucks and adam cole who still hurts my head not as bad as you know jr saying baby just doesn't sound right not to me not to anyone that i know pretty much not to anyone even if i don't know you like him, that JR saying Bebe is just wrong. But talking trash about Hangman, saying people really knew him like he did. They wouldn't be chanting cowboy shit. They'd be chanting coward shit. I'm kind of uh, slightly disappointed, though, actually, because I mean, if there's ever a time for how much they call, you know, call people chicken shits in the world, like it's the same way as calling them a coward. Like it was the perfect chance, like the way they're doing it, to actually fit one in there on it. Yeah show where they can actually say it and they didn't so i mean they thought it was too obvious i don't know but it was a perfect opportunity for a chicken shit and they didn't do it now come on man couldn't be any more handed to you on a silver platter and you still screwed it up but anyway, wait and see what they do with that match when it happens. Giovanni interviews Sting in the ring to get an upset, update on Darby. And before he could open his mouth, here comes MJF running his mouth, which, again, if you're not behind MJF, I mean, he's good at what he does. Like, he is really good, and it just seems really natural and just irritating the holy hell out of everybody. Like, he's really good at it. And everyone that tries to say he's not really good at it, Apparently, he's doing his job, and you just really, really hate him. 
which is okay. It really is. You're allowed to hate him. That's kind of his job, but he comes down. Yeah, Sting drops him with a punch. Here comes Wardlow and Sean Spears. Yeah, Sean Spears. See if they give him anything besides his, you know, what he's doing now. I mean, since he did the whole perfect 10 thing, I mean, 10 was over. He wasn't. But he's there doing that, attack him. Yeah, just wallop him with the chair, runs his mouth some more because, I mean, again, Hell Darby, if he comes back, that's going to be the same fate. And again, it's MJF with his people. I mean, that's what he's meant to do. Before it's all said and done, Sting does get back to his feet, and MJF kisses the dynamite ring and lays him out with it. Then we see him later. And he makes Sean Spears' dude's accountability buddy. Or accountability, whatever. And he walks off. But again, overall, what they're doing there, um, Sting got involved. MJF still got to piss people off. Like it's giving people stuff to do. And again, MJF's good on the mic. Like they got a real good talent there. And thankfully he got to go, like and there was an AEW. Because I think if they had that in WWE, 95, 98, 99% of what comes out of his mouth wouldn't be coming out of his mouth. I mean, he'd still be able to use the word like the. That's about the only thing that would still be happening. Because I would never let him get away with that. So hopefully they keep that going. And it was overall really, really, you know, good. I mean, those shots were there, but it sting. And it kept him safe. Again, gave like the whole thing to do, kept it going without Darby being there. And then Jeff got to run his mouth, which even if it hurts your head, that's his job. Sorry. It really is. It's what he's there to do, to piss you off to no end. And he's really, really good at it. So, too bad. And moved on. moving on from that, and that whole thing that they did, round one of the TBS Women's Championship Tournament, which Penelope Ford versus Ruby Soho. Yeah, you know, I think it was before the first break there, the commercial picture in picture, I believe. Bunny skips down to the ring, yeah, doing the normal. Skipping down there. Um, good facial reactions. So you see her outside the ring with Ruby doing, Ruby doing her thing. Uh, they tried to do the exchange of the brass knucks. The ref sees it, kicks him out of the ring. Ruby gets the roll up for the victory, which I think they could have done a little you know, better with that. But that's not over between them. Uh, no way that ended that way. And they're going to let it end that way of the way they've been doing the brass knucks and taking people out. So. Let's see where it goes from here, but nothing really big and exciting out of it. I mean, it wasn't a terrible match, which is a plus after, you know, Britt and Anna. So see how that goes. Bobby Fish defeats Anthony Green easily. Continues to just molly and ground and pound after the match until Punk comes down. He leaves and it sets up Punk's first dynamite match there against Bobby Fish. Again, okay, I was having all these good matches when he got there. And now they have him turn and, you know, be a bad guy. Uh, I think him and Punk are going to have a great match. You know, their styles match, you know, just hitting each other and stuff. Um, let's see what Bob again. He's doing great here, doing better matches than I let him have in NXT for the longest time. So I'm okay with that. I think it'll be a good one. Will it be the greatest? No, but it's two dudes that can do it and they're going to go out and do it well, regardless of what you think. You could hate them, but it's going to be a good match, especially compared to a lot of matches we've seen. I'll be excited for it. We'll see what Punk and them can do. Shivani interviews Dante Martin, Leo Rush. Leo's doing his normal thing again. I think he's talented as hell. He's just something about him. And there's a reason he got let go of so many places and yada, yada, yada. Um, he's always been rumored to have you know, bad attitude. But interview Dante Martin. La da 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 da. Sets up a match against his Idell brothers next week. Dante Martin didn't look too happy about it. We'll see how everything goes from there. Again, Leo Rush is talented. Dante Martin, talented. The Idell brothers, talented. So we'll see what, you know, what they're going to do with all of it. Who's going to win? Or they go forward with it, but it'll be a good match. I just hope Leo Rush gets his face shut because he hurts my head, which is what he's supposed to do. I don't mean character-wise, just all the garbage you always continuously hear backstage for so long. Hurt my head, but 
He's very full of himself. He plays it off very, very well. He does what he has to do. He's really good at doing the heel thing. So didn't like when he was Bobby's, you know, like mouthpiece. Um, he had good matches again. He's a cruiserweight champ over there in the machine. So see what they do with this. I'm just excited to see the Seidel brothers have the match. Whatever you want to call him, Matt Seidel, Evan Bourne, whatever. Like, dude can wrestle, so it's good to see him do stuff. Men's World Title Eliminator Tournament. Um, I don't understand. Uh, like, Eddie attacked, you know, Kingston defeated Lance Archer. We started out with him attacking him on the ramp. And they literally just were just... It wasn't the prettiest of matches at all. And like a brawl, people looked like they were just getting mauled and whipped. And it ended with... With a quick roll up after Archer went for the moonsault, and landed literally head into the mat. Um, he does the quick roll up, and I will say that all the comments I saw people saying, "You know, good for him." Hopefully, like it's a character. Once he is physically actually coming, giving you a reason, like he's playing his character well. Whether you like it or not, wishing that something is broken and they can never go again. Like, I mean, good at not dropping the f bombs, but you're fucked as a human being to hope that someone that big landing on their head that, you know, something really bad did happen. Like you're a garbage dumpster fire of a human being. Like I know people that have wronged me that I don't wish that on, like really, really wronged me. So for you to go and say that you really are like the biggest pile of shit on the planet. And if you saw anyone, I'm sure you saw the comments. If you're listening to this, people talking all kinds of trash. I don't know what the hell is wrong with people to make them do that, but near to me, no one pisses me off. Again, like what the hell did he physically do for you to wish that kind of harm on the man? Like he's playing a character. Unless he's literally like done some damning shit to you in real life. You're a scumbag, and I want you to know that from the bottom of my heart. From all of us here wrestling with ski. You're a douche canoe. And we'll see where they go with it. And when we get an update, I haven't seen anything. Um Dan Lambert and the men of the year run their suck holes because that's what they're good at. Sammy Guevara came and he held his own on the mic doing it all on his own. Again, the Jericho's on the Jericho cruise, you know, there's all that. You know, we know it's happening. Um, they held his own and they set up the match next week with uh, Sammy defending the title, you know, TV title against the TNT title against Ethan Page. And if Sammy loses, he obviously loses the title, but he has to leave the inner circle forever. And if Sammy wins, which he will, you heard it first. Uh, he gets to choose three members of America top team to face the inner circle, which we all know, obviously, that's going to happen. Not going to have him lose, do all this and then lose the inner circle. That's just, man, that would be mind altering if that actually happened. And then, yeah, the normal... Sammy gets double teamed until Jack Hager and Santana and Ortiz and everyone else comes out to chase him off. And I think it'll be a good one. We all know. And Sammy can wrestle. We all know he's going to win. Um, it's got to see who they end up picking and how they end up doing it. And I could be wrong. I'm, I'll be okay if I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. I just don't see myself being wrong on that one. But we'll wait and see where they go there. Jungle... F- Boy defeats Brandon Cutler. Yeah, gets win easily. Says he's not, you know, he's ready for another one. Puts him back in the hold. Yeah. Here came Adam Cole to run his mouth. Young Bucks attack from behind. He gets whooped here, there, and everywhere. Thrown off the ramps. Through, you know, through a table on the floor. See where they go with that. He did a good job with it. Just, you know, didn't really catch my interest. I was waiting for Cody and Malachi. Again, overall, good match. Uh, Cody finally got the win. They say he won the feud, but I mean, if, man, you know, if wins in that matter, he's one and two. And Malachi's two and one, so he won it. I don't get how that happens. Me and Dan were talking about that, the, you know, in the group message the other day. But you know, I don't want to say it's over really don't so we'll we'll see how that all works out um i mean that means malachi can finally move on i like him better than cody i always have no offense to cody i like what he's doing here it's just 
you know, I want it to be over and they both move on. But overall, great match and a much better night than Rampage, which is why Dynamite gets better ratings and all that than a lot of the Rampages. So they're trying. It's just, you know, got to get people, you know, working more, working better, more experience, better feuds. Yeah. You know? I think this, all these tournaments is going to be really good. I think it's going to be really, really good, actually. Going to lead to some good matchups, going to lead, you know, title matches down the line. And the women's one will lead to a whole nother title, which will give someone more chances and more opportunities to work with more people. Which getting that division, you know, up and moving, you know, and get it more fine tuned and working better, it won't hurt anything at all. So, all for that too. So, overall, I say Dynamite was way better than Rampage. I'm not going to give it a grade, I'm not a teacher. It was way better than what they gave us on Rampage. So then moves us on to Friday Night Smackdown with the first three segments. First one, Roman talking trash. And doing his thing with, you know, Heyman. You know, all that. Like you're supposed to do. See, it's easy. Let it uh, calls out Brock. Goes to commercial. Comes back. Still talking. Calls out Brock. Enter the music. All hell breaks loose. Brock flings them all over the place, clothes lines them over the thing, bounces them off the things, hits them with the stairs, throws a camera at them, flings his cousins all over the place, flings producers and referees and people all over the place. You know, the usual Brock got screwed, said he was going to come out and do it. He did it, yeah. Roman, yeah, scampers away. Brock's still, yeah, doing that. They finally get it all backstage. They come back from commercial, you know, and after they do that, and there's Adam Pierce in the ring and definitely suspending Brock. And while Brock comes down, destroys him all over the place to include his pants. Poor Adam Pierce's pants got ripped to shreds. Two F5s choked him, like, but I'm pretty sure we heard Mike Cole of all people. You never seen Brock like this, da 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 da. Like, oh my God, like, I guess he forgot. At least I think he did. He said something around those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was. But apparently he doesn't remember Raw after you know Seth cashed in. And he literally like was flinging an announce table over on top of people and all kinds of stuff. Like pretty much the same thing, just toned down compared to that for some reason, which is you know kind of depressing. But Adam Pierce got laid out, took the whooping, and then later he's in the trainer's room and there was you know Sonia. Saying, of course, you didn't do it my way. And I said, I'd go out there and do it, but he did it his way. Now look at him. I'm stuck with all this responsibility. I just see the power trip thing coming. Um, even worse. Sooner or later, I mean, it's got to end with her getting back in the ring because I thought she was good. Like, she was talented. And then, you know, all the yeah, stalker stuff happened, so I get why. You know, she stepped away from in-ring competition. She was doing all kinds of other stuff. Wait till she was comfortable. All that was done, you know. But anyway, it's anything that Brock, you know, like, or saying you were surprised by what Brock did. You're just an idiot or you're not a wrestling fan at all. Because we all remember when all hell broke loose all those years ago. Just saying. I had to see Drew McIntyre. You know, do an open challenge. Sammy answers. And I called it. Like, well, he's going to go for the Luma kick. And Drew's going to hit the, oh, look, he did. Hit him with the Claymore, picks up the win. Again, Sammy, a different song. He could still go. So I still hope they do something with it. I mean, he doesn't need any big title or anything as long as they can keep doing. He's got the conspiracy thing down. Like, you look at him, you're like, yeah, I can see that. I can really, really, really see him doing that. And, you know, he does it well. So he doesn't need any title or even to pick up wins. But I did call the ending, which kind of sucks. But especially when, yeah, it's going to happen. They start doing the countdown. He was getting his head taken off. And we all knew it. But still, overall, I mean, Sammy holds his own, knows how to go. So see where he goes next and new music and all that. You know, I'd love to do that with people anymore. So maybe that's a good thing for Sammy. We'll see. Xavier gets coronated, has a coronation ceremony. Kofi plays the role of MC, which is good. Yeah, and celebrating his thing. Monsoor steals one off of Ali with the roll up again. 
happy that Corbin defeats Shin, which sucks because I don't know what I mean. Maybe that means Madcap's going to start having matches. They could, you know, Boogs and Shin against those two, but sad to see the role he was on. He was King Nakamura. Now he's just, you know, no crown. He's just normal Nakamura. He's already getting put down by Happy Corbin. So not my favorite thing. This is like my not my favorite thing was having Hit Row debut. I mean, they all talked, which they can do, but having Swerve and Top Dollar roll like Dustin Lawyer and Daniel Williams, whoever the hell, like wherever they got them from. Like just feeding them talent like that. I mean, I think it would have looked better to have like an established team or someone, you know, than beat them instead of just flinging dudes around like, you know, ragdolling them. But it makes them look good on their debut, I guess. So again, I never understood why you would do that. But even though it does make them look strong, good, like they're beating someone that we looked at and said, Who the hell are they? But they're getting murdered. Like we all saw it coming. I know they're going to start building them and giving them, you know, actual teams. This is just their debut, but it just hurt my head. I find it dumb. Kind of insulting to those people watching it. intelligence when they do stuff like that. And then it ended with that horrible just exchange between Charlotte and Becky with, you know, the title belt. Charlotte drops it, so she doesn't mean to. You know, and all the dirt sheets and everyone saying they're on Becky's side and that Becky confronted her after and they escorted Charlotte out of the building and Everyone thought it was, you know, <clears throat> to make Becky look dumb and Charlotte out for herself and all that. And no one wanting to work with Charlotte before that happened. Like, I mean, I don't know what's true, but there seems to be a lot of them all agreeing with it. And it was just a dumpster fire of a segment. Like the whole thing sucked. Uh, unnecessary. Again, so much stupid associated with it all. I didn't like it. I didn't get it. Sasha comes out. I never thought I'd say Sasha comes out and does the save. Like Becky gets to go out and be backstage. And apparently Charlotte walked right by Vince and just kept like, and Charlotte, you know, when Sasha is saving it. And again, who would we know? Charlotte's going to go over and then there's Sasha waiting for it. Like we all knew it was going to happen. Um, it hurts my damn head. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. Like, but there's a lot of different things coming from a lot of different people. And they all seem to say the same exact thing. And the locker room has Becky's back for standing up for herself. And I, mean, I don't know. Maybe Charlotte's britches are too big. Wouldn't be surprised. But again, where the hell is she going to go? I mean, impact. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing, but she get more out of AEW and Andrade's there, you know, and it's just not the talent. So, I mean, grow up. I don't know. Put her down a peg or two. I really don't understand, but it's sad when we're saying Sasha coming out and hearing, you know, the brawl and suit after, but hearing Michael Cole say boss time that much is actually going as saving the moment. Like that's kind of terrifying boys and girls, but Hey, at least we got to see Brock just unload and show clear, which means the match is going to happen sooner or later. But, it, I mean, it happened before at Mania when he showed up the next night in Rose Hill, so, in Raised Hell, whatever. Who was surprised that it happened this time again? I saw it coming. Nobody's going to go fling stuff. Like, idiots are going to get involved. He's going to start flinging people like Ragdoll, Shocker, like he's done it before. And even though we knew he did it before, it was still a thousand times better than that whole title exchange thing, which was the pits. I don't know which. It was between, yeah, Britt and Anna Jay or that. I didn't like either of them, but it's a good week of wrestling again. Now we get to see what the first new yeah, episode with all the new people moved around of Raw looks like tonight. Yeah, season premiere. So we'll see how that goes. I'm almost looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of videos seeing people debuting places. And yeah, hopefully there's not too many squash matches. Like, who the hell are those guys? But we got to see. And the first one after. Crown Jewel, so we'll see if you know Seth and Edge is really done or RK Bro and AJ and Omos is done. Like we'll see what they're gonna do with all that. I'm sure Bianca's gonna be the first one to go after Becky for the title because she didn't get pinned. So I mean they're gonna keep that going like it's something new. It's not, but that's what they keep saying. So we'll see what they do with a lot of it. I'm actually I mean, I'm pleasantly optimistic for the week though. Again, to see what they just do with the new people and new places and Halloween Havoc. That's tomorrow. 
I get to see Champa. We all know he's good. So I just wish that, yeah, she got to host it or she way the hell over there. Yeah, got to host it. I thought she did really good. I'm just not really looking forward to LA Knight doing it, but we'll see. He could prove me wrong and do a really good job. But all that being aside, I'm excited for the week of wrestling because, you know, I mean, when you start out with really low expectations, the only thing they can do is overshoot. So we'll see where it goes from there. But I appreciate you guys watching or listening. If you're watching, you don't want to look at this ugly mug and all the stuff on the wall, please feel free. Go find it on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, all those services. And the audio link now shares to Facebook, to the page. So you can check it out there. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think. If I was wrong, crazy, anything, I'm sure I was somewhere. Let me know what you think about Anna Jay and Brit's match. Because I thought that was the drizzling, gurgling, just pits of nothing good at all. But let me know what you think. I appreciate it as always. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy Raw. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of your night. Be good to each other. And until next time, peace.